Microsoft Word. This video is part three of our Microsoft tutorial series. This video is going to cover how to access and navigate the Microsoft Word applications. Presented by the Reedley College Reading and Writing Center. Hello, my name is Laura, and in this video, I'm going to show you the basics of how to use the Microsoft Word applications. As a student, you must have a general understanding of how to use the Microsoft Word application. Most instructors require their students to complete essays and other writing assignments using Word, and often assignments completed in other programs, such as Google Docs, will not be accepted or will lose points due to improper formatting issues. You have access to Word through the online app on your Outlook dashboard, or you can download the complete Office 365 suite to your computer through Microsoft or the individual apps through the Google Play Store. In this video, I will show you how to access Word as well as how to navigate some of the basic features you need to use to properly format assignments. For a detailed video on how to access the Office 365 suite, see part two of the Microsoft tutorial series. And for detailed instructions on how to properly MLA format a document, see part one of the writing tutorial series, both of which are located on the Reading and Writing Center Canvas page. Let's get started. To access the Outlook dashboard, you need to open the Reedley College website, navigate to the My Portal link in the upper right-hand corner to access the dashboard, and then sign in using your student ID and password. Then once you've signed in, click on your student email link. This will open your Outlook dashboard. From here, depending on your personal account settings, you will see some of the Office 365 apps along the left-hand side of the dashboard. You can open the Word dashboard by clicking on the Word icon. If you do not see the apps along the left-hand side of your Outlook dashboard, you can click on the nine dots in the upper left-hand corner of your screen to open the app launcher. As you can see, all of your Microsoft Office apps are located here. Once you have opened the Word dashboard, you will see the option to start a new blank document or select a template from the template catalog. Below that, you will see recently accessed files that Word is recommending you open. And below that, you will see all of your saved documents, your shared documents, and any documents that you have favorited. You can access this dashboard at any time as long as you are signed in on your school account. Office 365 provides students with a Microsoft Cloud account where your documents are stored. So when using the online version of Word, all of your work will automatically save and sync to your Cloud account. For students who prefer using Google Docs because of the auto save and sync to their Drive account, this works in the exact same way. For details on how to link your Microsoft Cloud account directly to your personal hard drive so that you can access and save documents directly from your computer, see part four of the Microsoft tutorial series located on the Reading and Writing Center Canvas site. Once you open a new document, there are a few settings that you should update before getting started with your assignment. I'm going to show you the basics of the main ribbon along the top of the screen. You have multiple tabs where you can navigate through different selection options within the application. The very top left, you can access the app launcher again, where you can go between different Microsoft Office apps. It says that you're in Word and using the title and saved feature right here, you can update the name of your document and the location where it is stored. You can simply click through the tabs to see the different options until you locate the one that you are looking for. First, I recommend when starting a new document that you check your margin settings. Most assignments, if MLA formatted, will require a one inch margin. To check the margin, click on the layout tab in the main ribbon at the top of the screen. You will see a drop down menu for margins on the left hand side. Most new documents are set to one inch by default, but it is always a good practice to double check the settings. 
some instructors or assignments will require you to set a custom margin. To do this, simply click on the custom margins at the bottom of the drop down menu. This will open a dialog box where you can input your custom margin values. Once you have entered your desired settings, click OK. The margin will automatically adjust to the new setting. These settings will only apply to the document you're working in at the current moment. The default will automatically go back to one inch all around when you start a new document. Next, I recommend you check your spacing settings. This adjusts the space between the lines of text in your document. Most assignments, if MLA formatted, will require the line spacing to be set to double with a before and after spacing set to zero. You can set the before and after spacing on the ribbon, but to check all of the settings at once, you wanna click on the three dot drop down menu towards the right hand side. Here you can select the paragraph options. By opening the paragraph options, you can set all of your general alignment settings. Your spacing needs to be set to before zero and after zero. Your line spacing should be set to double if MLA formatting and your before and after text indentation will generally stay the same. If you are working on a works cited page or annotated bibliography, or any other assignment that needs a hanging indent, you set that here under the special feature in indentation by clicking the drop down and selecting hanging. After the spacing is set, you should set up your header. Most assignments, if MLA formatted, will require you to have your last name and page number in the header. To open the header, you can either click on the little pop-out box on the upper right-hand corner of your document that says header, or you can open the insert tab and select header and footer, or if you're inserting page numbers, you can select page numbers. When the header is open, you will see a single row table appear on the top of your document. The outline of this table will not appear on your document unless you add custom borders. So when you save, submit, or print your document, all you will see is whatever you entered in the cell here. To set up your name and page number according to the MLA guidelines, you want to select page numbers, and then you want to select the third option that shows the number in the upper right-hand corner of the document, unless otherwise instructed by your instructor. Once you select the setting, you will see the pound sign appear in the header. Word will automatically insert the correct page numbers for you, so do not replace the pound sign with the one or any other number. You want to type your name to the left of the less than caret next to the pound sign. You want to make sure that there's a space between your name and the less than caret. Finally, to complete the header, highlight the entire cell to update the font and size of the text. You can do this using the pop-out box that appears here when it's highlighted, but if you click off of it and you need to do the highlighting again, you can always navigate back to the Home tab where you have access to all of your font style features. Unless otherwise instructed, most MLA formatted documents need to be set to Times New Roman, size 12. After you set the font and size, you can click anywhere outside of the header to close it. It will disappear from active view, but it will appear on your finished or printed document. If at any time you need to adjust your header, you can simply click on the pop-out box again to open it. Once you have started your document, you can update the name of the document by clicking on the title section at the top of the screen. If you saved it as a draft, as I did, you can always update the title of the document by clicking under file name and updating the name of the document. If you click on file, you have the option to start another new document or open an existing document you have saved in your files. If you click 
on Save As, you have several options of how to save your work, including the option to download a copy of the document to your computer. This feature is especially important when it comes to submitting an assignment because you cannot upload a document directly from your Microsoft Cloud to Canvas submissions. You must download it to your computer first before you can upload it into Canvas. You also have the option to download the document as a PDF, which some instructors prefer depending on the assignment. So always check the file type requirements on the original assignment in Canvas before submitting. Sharing your document is not the correct way to upload an assignment to Canvas nor is it acceptable to share a document to an instructor or classmate for review or feedback. Only share your document when specifically asked to do so. If you have an instructor who uses the comments feature in Word to leave feedback on your drafts or graded assignments, you can turn the comments on and off in the review tab. If you do not see comments when you open your document, but there is a comment bubble in the margin of the page, you need to turn the comments on to be able to see the full comment. Once the comments are open, you have the option to reply to that comment if you are going to resubmit the assignment for additional review, or you can resolve it or delete it. Resolving it simply unhighlights it from the active thread and deleting it will remove the comment altogether. If you are working from a single draft that has comments on it from previous feedback and review, be sure that you go through and delete the comments before downloading and submitting your assignment. Otherwise, your instructor will be able to see the comments left over from your revisions on the document. In the View tab, there are a few features that you might find helpful when working on an assignment. If you have to work with different indents and tabs, turning on the ruler will allow you to quickly reference where your indents are set. If you want to see the individual pages rather than a continuous document, you can turn the page ends on and off. For those who need reading assistance or like to have their drafts read aloud, you can use the Immersive Reader feature to have the computer read your text back to you. Immersive Reader also helps with some proofreading and editing because you can select different features that you want it to highlight, such as marking types of words or adjusting the text for easier viewing and reading. If you are composing a paper that requires footnotes or endnotes, you can insert them by opening the References tab and then selecting which feature you want to use. Under the Insert tab, you have the option to insert tables and images as well as special characters, symbols, and emojis. The app version of Word for phones and tablets is very similar to the online version, so most of the steps and information covered in the first half of this video will apply to the app version. If you are using the app version and need additional assistance, contact a tutor through the Reading and Writing Center. Now let's look at the installed desktop version of Word. Many of the features covered in the first half of this video will also apply to the desktop version. To begin, I'm going to close out of my web browser, and I'm either going to open Word using the icon shortcut that's on my desktop or from within your startup menu. Once you have opened Word, you will see the option to start a new document or to select a template from the template catalog. Below that, you'll see recently accessed files that Word is recommending you open. And below that, you will see all of your saved documents. By default, the desktop version of Word is not linked directly to your Microsoft Cloud account, so the only files you will see are the ones that you have saved directly to your computer. To transfer a document from the online version to the desktop version, simply open the online app, locate your document, and from there you want to go to File and then Save As and download a copy to your computer. This will save a copy of that document to your computer, but any changes you make on either copy will not show up on the other copy. So if you edit a document using the desktop version, it will not automatically update the online version. However, if you use both the online version and the desktop version, you can open your document in the online version and then select open in the desktop app in the editing drop-down menu located in the upper ribbon of your online version. This will open the online document in the desktop app. However, it will continue to save all of your changes and revisions to the online version's file located in your cloud. 
If you are interested in linking your Microsoft Cloud directly to your computer hard drive for faster access, see part five of the Microsoft tutorial series. The desktop version of Word looks very similar to the online version. I'm going to show you a few of the features that were covered during the online version walkthrough that are located in different areas within the desktop app. You will notice that the main ribbon at the top of the screen has all of the same tabs as the online version. However, it includes a new design tab as well as a mailings tab. The file tab is the same between both versions. You have the option to start a new document, open an existing document. You can save additional copies of a document to your computer. You can print, share, or export from the file menu. One thing that is different between the online version and the desktop version is how to access your paragraph settings. To open the paragraph settings dialog box, simply open the home tab if it's not open already, look under the section titled paragraph in the ribbon, and then click on the little box and arrow in the lower right-hand corner of that section. This will open the paragraph settings dialog box where you can update all of your setting features. Another minor difference between the desktop version and the online version is that when you set your before and after spacing to zero, you also have the additional option to click don't add space between paragraphs of the same style. For MLA formatted assignments, you wanna make sure that you click this box when you're updating your settings. I'm going to set everything to double so that it's set up according to MLA format. As mentioned before, if you're doing a special form of indent, such as hanging indents on works cited pages or annotated bibliographies, you can look at the paragraph settings box under indentation and then under special, use the drop down to select hanging. There are quite a few additional features in the insert tab of the desktop version that were not present in the online version. So if you need to insert a specific type of media, such as pictures, shapes, icons, charts, videos, or any sort of graphic or text box in addition to the text that's already on your document, it is recommended that you do so in the desktop version. You will find your header, footer, and page number functions under the insert tab, just like on the online version. However, in the desktop version, you can open the header and footer by simply double clicking on the top of the page or by going to the insert tab and then by clicking on header, footer, or page number. You always want to insert your page numbers using the page number function so that Word automatically updates your numbers according to each new page within the document. Once the header or footer is open, it will open a special tab in the main ribbon at the top of the screen where you have the option to edit all of the header, footer, and page number settings. Unlike the online version, the desktop version gives you additional page number functions to choose from. So when using the desktop app, you wanna make sure that you select top of page and then plane number three for standard MLA formatted assignments. Some instructors may prompt you to use a different page number setting, but generally speaking, you always wanna use plane number three. Once you insert the page number, you will see the number appear on your document. Word will automatically update the number on each new page that you add to your assignment, so do not type the number in the header. You can open and close the header or footer either by double clicking in the main body of the page or by using the close header and footer button within the ribbon. The layout tab allows you to edit your margins just like the online version. There are a few additional features located under layout, such as being able to add columns to your text or to set up page breaks. You can also access the paragraph settings box from this tab as well. If you need to insert endnotes or footnotes, you will find those under the references tab. The review tab is where all of the comment features are located. Just like the online version, you have the option to create a new comment on part of the text. You can delete existing comments, or you can scroll through the comments left by an instructor or classmate by clicking the previous or next comment boxes. If feedback has been left on a document, but you do not see the comments on the right-hand side of the page, you need to click the show comments feature to turn them on. However, by default, Word will generally open the comments for you if it detects comments within the document. The review tab also gives you access to the thesaurus, the spell checker, the word count feature, as well as a read aloud assistant. This read aloud assistant is different from the one that you will find in the view tab under immersive reader. Along with immersive reader, 
Under the View tab, you have the option to change the layout of how your page appears, and you have the options to change whether you see your text pages in a vertical line, or you can see multiple pages side by side. You can also turn the ruler on and off, add grid lines to your assignment if you're working with images, or open the navigation pane to use the search feature. This has been a basic tutorial on how to navigate and use the Microsoft Word applications. If you need assistance with additional features or specific requirements in either the online version or the desktop version, please contact a tutor through the Reading and Writing Center. Thank you for watching. If you have questions or need additional support, contact a tutor through the Reading and Writing Center.